Hi guys, this is a recording I'm making in particular specifically for you, Chow, Johan, Andrew and Chris. And in fact, I'm probably going to make this video somewhat generic as well so that we might use it and apply to other parts of the organization and potentially other organizations, but mostly for Acuvia. So here it is. Here is a video that we're going to make for you so that you can apply steps in your regular meetings that will help you as a team elevate the game and work on more strategic issues to find and resolve really important strategic issues and avoid the trap of simply just updating each other or working only on the thing which seems most urgent. This is the one of the ways that we can help make sure your time together is as useful and as value add as possible. So you ready? Okay, so here's, the, here, here's a structure for a team like yours, a team that has people reporting to you underneath where the work of you as a senior team becomes especially important because it actually influences many people underneath you. Okay, so in this, this is a regular meeting. A regular meeting. And it might begin with an open, and in the first place, with you, Chow, or with the team leader providing five minutes update on anything that's happened that they're aware of from above that you need to update the team. So this is an update, but really it needs to be no more than five minutes and if possible less. And if you don't have anything really specific to add as the team leader from information that's come from above that not everyone may be ever aware, then don't do it. But if you have something that you think is important, great. But please avoid then going into discussing it in depth. That's not what we want to do now. Do not get into problem solving this update. Just make it an update. It may trigger all sorts of conversations, but don't get into them. Don't get into them. They will come later in the meeting. Then, so once we do that, this is when you do want to provide each person just a personal update that will be around 60 seconds to 90 seconds. There's no more required than that. This is just the check-in and what's been going on in the last week or two or what's really coming in the next week or two that you're concerned about. It's simply a check-in. Please do not problem solve that update either. Just use it as a mechanism to provide more information and more interest in the room itself to prepare you for the next step. Do not let any one individual just talk on, on and on and on. And do not let any individual speak for five seconds and that's it. See whether everyone speaks for at least 30 seconds, but no more than 60. And then help each other to stay on track and do not get distracted to go down the rabbit hole of solving any one individual's problems or having long commentary on what one person did update. It's a trap and it's not helpful to do at this point. Then, we need to make sure that we review a short list of items that you consider could be worthy to look at today. So these are going to be tactical. They're not big strategic issues, but here's the first thing I want to mention. Together, list them. All you do is list. Spend no more than three to five minutes listing Give the people in your room, we're assuming, of, of course, a small senior team, list some of the things which are immediate, pressing, or important together. List those. Now, in the context of you, Chow, in this team, it might be that you review some of the key strategic things that came out from your BD meeting, meeting, BDU meeting earlier in the year, and you take from that list a few things which you add. Once you've listed those things in, here's what I wanted to describe to you is that you've opened up a kite. And for those of you who know this teaching, you'll know what I'm talking about. For those, just follow on. There's no need to panic. It'll become clear. Once you've listed those options, you then need to start to analyze and choose which of the items which are most important to talk about now. And that is the items that are tactical, that is the items that have most that, that seem most pressing. That is the items which you might think are where you share most overlap between you as senior team members. 
Do not spend long doing this. List in three to five minutes, choose in three to five minutes. Sim simply decide which of these items and make sure you have no more than about um, three or four to deal with over a 60 minute period. So keep it short, keep it relaxed. Um, we want to keep it fun, but make a decision so that by the time you get to the end of the kite, you have our roughly three to four things you want to work on. This whole kite, listing, choosing, deciding, should take no more than six or seven minutes even. So it's not long, but what this means is that when you come together in this regular way, you are not following some standard set of agenda items or issues that you just speak about one day, one week after the next, which will ultimately send you to a kind of a, uh, an asleep mode in your meeting. This is the problem for repetitive agenda items. You actually create the agenda in the meeting and it's done in the context of the original update from the, your team leader in the context of your sharing with one another very briefly and concisely. Then you look at, let's list the, uh, the things which are most pressing, the problems which are occurring and re-recurring for you. Then you select those and you go for it. Now after that, that's when you work on them. This is when you work. Work on item number one. Then go to item number two and, and three. By the way, for the issues that you've got here that you consider to be, just I want to come back to this, consider to be rather significant and strategic, that's where you want to actually take that out and give it to a devoted meeting. So try it in this two weekly or two weekly meeting, make the issues tactical. If they're really big, it's great that they've come up, but they're not for this meeting. Give yourself a whole half hour or hour to do, dedicate a conversation to it. Uh, otherwise, it'll swamp this meeting. It'll swamp it. Okay, so work on uh, item number one and two. So now I'm going to just speak for just a few minutes about how you do this. How you do this. I want to provide you just a little more feedback on how you do this. This is the overall structure. The whole meeting should be no more than 90 minutes if it's happening every one or two weeks. 60 minutes is probably better. And remember, you're creating your agenda inside the meeting, not from before. You could, by the way, share items on your email beforehand. And you might even tic-tac around what you think is important. But when you come together, you make the final decision about what it is that you'll work together, work on. All right, final piece. Are you ready? We're going to go to how to work on this. So this is where we're, I'm going to remind you a little bit about how to apply the kite to how to work on things. In the first instance, you want to ask the question, for our item agenda number one, um, do we want to work on the problem space? Do we want to discuss just for a few minutes what could be the underlying problem we're dealing with here? Or if it's absolutely plain and clear and very simple, go straight to the resolution space. So you'll need to make a decision as a group. Do we spend time talking about the problem? Or do we go straight to the resolution? The reason I'm asking you this is because most groups come to problems if you've got some people discussing what the core problem is they're dealing with while others are trying to fix it. And that's happening at the same time leads to lots of frustration when that, those two conversations are happening in parallel, but neither get fully resolved. And neither, neither parallel conversations are really happening where they can feed into one another. So I'd suggest you do the problem space first, then go to the resolution space. Or if you know problem, go straight to resolution. Okay, if you go to problem space, here it is. Here's the steps. Are you ready? The, the problem space kite looks a little like this. Ask yourselves the question, what are the signs or symptoms of the problem? In other words, how do we even know we have a problem here? What's the evidence that there is a problem? So start with what you can see, hear, feel, or touch um, as the signs and symptoms that consider are evidence that there is a problem. So you're backing up a little bit on the problem. Once you've listed those signs and symptoms together, just list, don't discuss them, please don't try and fix them, just list them. 
Then once you've done that, then you want to bring um, you, you want to bring your analysis to those signs and symptoms. I would suggest that you might try to group them. Are there a few signs and symptoms which are naturally aligned or share some sort of underlying cause? So group them and then consider what are the underlying causes of those groups. Then finally, identify when you get to the bottom of the kite, ask yourself, great, so what are the important problems we want to address now? So no longer the signs and symptoms, you've grouped them and you've found what are the underlying drivers, so what is the problem we want to fix now? What is the problem we want to manage? Remembering some problems are not to be fixed. Some problems have to be constantly and more fully managed or navigated. They're too tricky and wicked and complex to just fix. They're going to be with you for a long time, but you do need to bring your attention to managing them. So that's the problem space kite. That's the problem space kite. So you can do this very quickly. I've done this with groups where we've frankly spent two hours doing it on if we really need to, or you can do it in as little as 10 minutes. Um, so go through it. Don't, don't let the meeting become too ponderous. Bring a sense of curiosity and then think deeply about what, what and more critically about what might be causing them and arrive at your fundamental problem. Then you as a group can move to the resolution space. Now, the resolution space has its own kite. And we've almost finished, and we're going to move to the resolution uh, space now. So what are, the, what are the questions you would ask? OK, so in the first question you'd ask, um, uh, in relation to the problem that you want to address, what are some options or ideas for action? Make a quick list. Remember, don't go all the way down to how you'd operationalize it. Just list. Just list. This is the divergent part of the process. Just list. Do not do anything other than list in the first place. And that listing may only take three minutes. Then, when we converge, we start to analyze. So consider which items seem best to act on. Actually, there's lots of different analytical questions here. You may find some of your ideas naturally group and they make a lot of sense to bring together. Um, and so grouping is always one option when we come to the analytical part of the kite where we converge. You might like to ask yourself the questions, which actions will give us a quick win? Which actions address, like grab a, a low hanging fruit? Which ones have the best potency? Which ones are going to cost less? All of these are analytical questions. Which ones could we do early or quickly? You'll know once you've listed, then you can see what, where the energy is and where, how it could be useful to act on some. And some of these you will not act on. That's good. Up here, quantity is what we want, not quality, quantity. The more you can list in a short period of time, the better. And by the way, if you're a group that's got more introversions in it, introverted personalities, then don't go straight to listing as a group. Give everyone about 60 seconds to think of ideas first, then list them. That's an important distinction. And we do know that, and the evidence is absolutely plain, brainstorming without that step is far worse. Give people a few minutes to write things down. In fact, that also applies to this. Give most, most groups benefit from just having a few moments, even if it's just 15, 20 seconds to stop and think for themselves before they share what the signs and symptoms or before what they share are the options for action to address whatever problem they've identified. So back to this resolution kite. What are the uh, items that you think could be most useful? Then after analyzing it, okay, what actions to take now? This is the business end of the meeting. And so remember, if you have not done the problem kite because it, you felt it was unnecessary, you go straight to here. So we've got this problem. OK, let's list some options. Then you'll quickly assess them for suitability. Then you'll take action. 
One particular tool that can be really useful right here to sharpen your action plans is to use RACI, which I know many of you will have heard of. So, but RACI belongs in the corner part of this kite. So who is responsible for this action? That, that is, who's responsible to take action? Who might actually have overall accountability, which could be different from the person who's taking action? Who needs to be consulted if there is anyone who needs to be consulted in the process? Or does anyone need to be informed? Racy. This is just a use way to tighten up your action plans because this is where we want simplicity. Remember that when it comes to executing, complexity is the enemy. We want simplicity now. We want straightforward, absolute simplicity on who's to do what and who's to do it by when. And this is the racy. All right. So we have covered the problem space kite and the resolution kite. Let's loop back now to complete this little teaching where I have covered off how you might actually run a repetitive meeting in a week by week meeting, beginning with any update from the team manager, no more than 60 seconds to update, all as substrate for the reaction that happens here, to put it in a scientific metaphor. List a few of your um, issues that you think would be useful. Then, then select some out if they're um, too, too strategic or big. Give them to a, to a dedicated meeting or forum of some kind. Choose your three to four, then move on and do item number one, then number two, and so forth. How do you work on that? Decide whether you're going to be in the problem space uh, or go straight to the resolution space. And then in each case, I've just shared a few questions. So this is some tools to help make your regular team meetings really great. What we're avoiding here is the unhelpful updates that happen when most teams come together. Everyone shares, but in actual fact, very little shared action is agreed to. And engagement levels we know are really low in those meetings. Curiously, we know that the team manager in those contexts are very engaged, but the rest of the team are not. There's a big gap. There's a big gap in your usual team meeting experience. And so most team managers consider their weekly meetings to be highly satisfying, um, but most team participants consider them to be much less satisfying than the manager. This process avoids that gap. All right. Thanks, everybody. I hope this is helpful. See you.